I'm probably I probably read Genesis probably maybe a little bit more literal uh, for this re for this reason this is this is why I do I look where where God constantly goes back well in the Ten Commandments I mean for Moses look listen uh, here's what you're gonna do I, I just like I built the, the world I created the world and in six days on the seventh day I rested this is what I want you to do um, and, you know and and there's this kind of, and then Jesus um, not so much in this in the six day paradigm but Jesus going back and saying hey listen in the very beginning this is the way it well, the way it was mm -hmm. It's amazing because we have theologians today that are saying that Jesus was just a man of his time. He didn't have the, uh, the I mean, it's like God himself doesn't have the, mm -hmm. the knowledge of what he did. And so he's just kind of speaking to accommodate the, the knowledge of the day. And, and Paul, and some of them are, are actually coming out saying, hey, listen, if, we, if we're going to do away with Adam, we have to do away with Paul. Yeah. Uh, because Paul's theology, you know, almost all of his theology rests on that, that real historical Adam and Jesus being the second Adam approach. Uh, that, yeah, that's that, why that's I... Two passages yeah. in Romans 5 yeah. uh, where through one man death entered the world and through uh, uh, because of him uh, sin entered. Um, well, and then in 1 Corinthians 15 it speaks of Christ as the second Adam versus mm -hmm. the first Adam and that's about the resurrection. Um, there are a couple of things uh, Peter Enns, for example, is one who is more recently basically said, I think uh, Moses or whoever wrote this got it wrong. Yeah. And has said it that clearly. Yeah. Um, and that he's part of a very primeval culture and couldn't have done anything more than to tell the story. Well, my point for Peter Enns is why in the world are you still a Christian? A Christian. <laughs> Then the second part he's just more recently come out with is that Paul got it wrong. Yeah. yeah. So how can I, sitting, this, this goes back to the first thing I said, my stance toward the scripture mm -hmm. needs to be one of respect, I think, because otherwise I can start to see pieces of this that I think will fit together as uh, something that human beings have, have cobbled together. Yeah. But Behind that, even if they did cobble it together, I believe God was orchestrating it. So yeah. I'm, I'm not as concerned, mm -hmm. hence I'm not a biblical scholar. And I'll say <laughs> that right up front. I'm not as concerned about whether... Uh, Wait a second, stop. What did you, you said you're not a biblical scholar? No, I'm a theologian, which is a different thing. Oh, yeah. I thought they were all the same. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've had enough. Uh, for Twenty years. I don't know. I've had enough uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Old and New Testament to uh, yeah. certainly be one, but I won't yeah. claim that. Okay. Um, but, I claim it for him. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Uh, but what What I have to say then is, uh, uh, well, then what is the point of all this that God has written? Yeah. And if it's simply to tell stories yeah. that old people uh, told one another. If you pull um, Paul out of it, and you pull whatever whoever wrote the first uh, uh, book out of it, uh, what gives you the right to do that? Uh -huh. I think it's a modern understanding of accuracy that we place on the scripture. Well, well, what, it, what what amazes me is is that you hear all these people are like, okay, these were primitive people; they had to have these stories, and I'm thinking, well. No, um, because the the easiest way, for, if if it was just that they want that God wanted to communicate in 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 some s story that they could understand was an evolutionary story. I mean, you know, that's what the entire world was in the time of Israel. They were all evolutionists. They, I mean, they all believed that they'd come, you know, evolved from different things. I mean, the easiest thing for them to have done would have been to say, okay, you, you were created over you know ten million years. I mean, that was a radical thought when, when, when it comes in and there's a, and man is made out of nothing. That is a radical thought. And I mean, that, that, that lifts the, the discussion. That lifts the debate. If I, I like what, uh, oh, he, he died. He wasn't a Christian. Uh, he wrote um, Entertaining or Amusing Ourselves to Death. Yes, yeah. He said that what was amazing about the Hebrew Bible was, and, and, got, and the word was is that it forced them to think conceptually, which nobody else had ever done. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and by forcing them to think conceptually and to not have images and to think in terms of, the, you know, they, it changed, it, it actually elevated the entire culture. 
I think that these guys are 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 reading back into something. I think that evolutionary th uh, theory has so grasped them that, that that we have this pride of place chronologically. We're today, so we're smarter. Uh, really, than how they build the you know the pyramids and how yeah. you know. I mean, that, I think it's the the hubris of the modern human being that we're better than the groups that have come before us. Yeah, I and. Uh, so, um, just one example. Were there world wars before this last century? <laughs> you know, so we've created incredible technology, yeah. which we also have used to destroy each other. Yeah. So there's a, a sense in which if we start to be proudful over what it is that we as a, a, a I just read a sermon not long ago from uh, Karl Barth, a theologian in the Mm -hmm. early 1900s and he was preaching at his village church he wrote his sermons in manuscripts so we still have them and it's his sermon that Sunday after the Titanic sunk hmm. and it's a sermon against human pride and the hubris that rises up in us and that we're tempted to that this boat cannot be sunk. Yeah, in fact, did, didn't quotes, they say God himself couldn't sink I, the boat? Perhaps, yeah. I don't know, but it, it's it's, I think, a sermon that we all need to be hearing as moderns huh. because we feel pretty good about ourselves on this. Uh, uh, what was that? I'm going to have to go back. I'd, yeah. I'd like to actually go back. What was that? That was Karl Barth after? Karl Barth, yeah, the Sunday after the Titanic sank. And uh, it's a powerful sermon. I think it's in a book by uh, Will, William Williman okay. uh, that has two sermons of his uh, wow. in there. F for me, then, there's a... A part that I want to come back to on those yeah. two issues that I think are fundamentally important. If you're saying Adam is not real mm -hmm. and Eve, um, what part of the story is real to you and why? Yeah. And how can you pick and choose? Now, there is another uh, biblical scholar, New Testament scholar, N.T. Wright, who has a much more sophisticated discussion of this. And he suggests that it isn't uh, in the Romans passage about the forensic discussion of uh, righteousness being acquitted before God, but instead it's about returning uh, to uh, Jesus who was able to do what Adam did not do. Mm -hmm. And that's what Romans 5 mentions. His, his argument is much more uh, sophisticated and has some weight to it. He's not saying Paul's wrong, he's saying our understanding of Paul is a little uh, confused there. Mm -hmm. In the same way I think if you're denying Adam, you're affecting the area of image of God and the uh, area of sin that we share. Those are, I think, the two doctrinal issues that are most important for us today. I find those two being confused immensely by Christians. Number one, the image of God uh, can be used about respect and sanctity for life. Mm -hmm. So why our whole Western civilization is built on that understanding mm -hmm. of sanctity? Okay, there are reasons why Christians were outraged that ISIS was beheading fellow Christians, other than just fellow humanity dying. Mm -hmm. uh, but them beheading anybody, I think, would be an outrage for most of us who live in the West. Mm -hmm. And this is a blink of an eye mm -hmm. for them. What is the difference? It's the difference of the basis of their ethical understanding of what is right and what is wrong and what is valuable in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the Christian t takes its understanding back to Genesis 1. There's value in the world because there, and that by the way is a, one of the greater explanations, there are six times the image of God is used in the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the longest and most clear explanations of what is meant by that. That is right there in that first chapter. You throw that out, I think you throw out much of the moral reasoning that we offer as, as uh, Christians for why we do what we do and mm -hmm. what's right and what's wrong. I think there's a, a, a very practical thing that's just happened recently is we're seeing gay marriage uh, approved and, and even a lot of times uh, Christians are you know, just kind of accepting of it, whether they agree with it or not, they're accepting. But um, you know, but we've been arguing on tradition. We, tradition can be overthrown. I mean, tradition is nothing. You can start a new tradition tomorrow. Okay, but I think I think when you throw away some of these, when Jesus referred back to Adam mm -hmm. and Eve, mm -hmm. he said, "This is the way that God did it." Mm -hmm. Okay, it's rock solid there. But if you take away Adam and Eve, then you really don't right. have 
you don't really have a theological, you may have a traditional basis, mm -hmm. but who cares about, honestly, who cares about tradition? Um, if, if that's all it is, then mm -hmm. we're free to, we're, we really are free to create our own relationships. Yeah. Uh, but because God himself rooted it there and specifically said, this is where it started, and this is what's normal, this is what's right, then, then we, we stay there. But if we wipe, if we wipe away a historic Adam and Eve, then really, I don't think we really have the, the right to complain about where marriage and everything else mm -hmm. is going. I, that's because it, it certainly doesn't make because there's a lot of things that well, have been done if in you, history that. Once again, my concern is yeah. if you're picking and choosing what you think yeah. is real and where the scripture writers got it wrong. Uh huh. What's to say you're not going to take Jesus Christ and say, you know, they just made up this story about the cross and resurrection, or this has happened in the last 25 years uh, with the Jesus seminar. You oh, know, that, you I was going to say, of, uh, yeah, they, that was he, he was resurrected only in the imagination of the yeah. disciples. And yeah. even their sayings of Jesus have been yeah. suspect. So what did Jesus say? Yeah. Well, if you take a look at their five Gospels, which is the publication from that group, there's precious little that Jesus says. <laughs> who was it? it? Famously, I don't remember who it was, but in one book they came down to the only thing that they really believed that Jesus said was Jesus wept or something. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like... The one that, that shocked me that almost all of them thought Jesus really said has something to do with his statement on the way to the cross. Uh, and he says to the women who are mourning him um, something about their the babes or it's a it's a strange statement about trees i think uh, i'll have to, i wasn't thinking of going there so i hadn't thought of it in a long time so the stranger the statement yeah that must yeah. be it, that jesus actually said that yeah because they wouldn't have written it it's a really hard statement to interpret well if you're going to i mean we've seen this play out the history historical jesus yeah. was a study from 1850 all the way up until now it's gone through three major phases and now maybe a fourth. So that if you study what you think with your own understanding of history is the reality of what actually happened. Uh, what you could come up with is what John Dominic Crossan has done. Uh, the Irish scholar says, Jesus was a cynic who was a Mediterranean Jew and that's all we can know, he was a peasant. Um, and that's it. Well, okay, so what does that do then for one's faith at that point? Yeah. If that's what you think is the only thing that can be established by history. I think here's where they're missing an understanding of this, the purpose of Scripture, which is for the Holy Spirit to quicken our hearts when we hear it and read it and assure us uh, that we uh, are... Uh, are not just making this up mm -hmm. and are not just believing a lie. Yeah. Uh, so John Calvin had something that I think was really important here and it was the test, inner testimony of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So how do I know scripture is true? I know because the Spirit of God who wrote this text is also alive in me yeah. and is making me understand this is true. So if you pull that out and get to decide where and what becomes your Bible, um, you could expect all kinds of mm -hmm. aberrations from, well, I don't like that, so I'm going to choose this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I think, very, very, very frequently what I hear um, on any moral issue that we might have. You know, who are you to judge me? Mm -hmm. uh, you're supposed to show love. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a real misunderstanding of uh, Christian faith as it's portrayed here in Scripture, and it's just taking one verse and making that your mantra. Hmm. I don't consider that to be Christian. Yeah, uh, I consider that to be an aberration of the hmm. Christian faith. So I think we have a lot of people who are Christians in their, their name, but not Christian uh, in terms of a, a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and well, it goes back to Jesus said, "You know, my sheep hear my voice." Uh, when you talked about the Spirit, mm -hmm. I, I think that, and, you know, I, I'll say this: I, I'm pretty much an optimist. I I think that the church has has went through attacks and has come out 
fine. In fact, many times the the heretical aspect has caused the church to mm-hmm. regain focus and actually concretely put down what sure. they what they have what they have believed and, and, and defend it and defend it right. I, I think maybe, maybe maybe it seems a little bit strange today because maybe we forgot that we have to defend the faith sometimes. I mean, get back yeah. in and defend it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Um, and um, you know that iron sharpening iron and that. You know that that whole idea of hey, listen, pulling down the vain philosophies that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Yeah. Um, 